Okay, welcome to Monday. It's good to see you guys on Friday. Uh, go ahead and get out your homework. All right, this one's going to be a little bit tough to grade because they're all graphs. So I will describe the graph, and you will check to see if you got it right or not. All right, let's see. Uh, number two should be a horizontal line, horizontal dotted line or dashed line uh, with a y-intercept of 4. With a y-intercept of 4, and the shading will be above the dotted line, above the dotted line. Number four uh, is a vertical line, vertical line uh, with an x-intercept of one, a solid line, and shade to the left of the line, shade to the left. All right, number six is a, well, basically it's the x-axis. Uh, it should be dotted, and the shading is below the line, below the line. Uh, and number eight is a vertical line through negative, is that negative two? Yeah, negative two, it's solid and shade to the left side of the line. All right, number 10, it's got a negative slope. The y-intercept is positive one. It's dashed or dotted line, and you're going to shade above the line, above the line. So zero, zero is a test point, should have been false. All right, number 12, another negative slope. Uh, it also goes through one. Uh, and it is solid this time, and it is shaded in the same manner as number 10 to the right of the line. Zero, zero should have failed for that test point. All right, number 14, positive slope this time. Y-intercept of negative 3. Um, solid line, shade below, shade below. So once again, it looks like zero, zero failed for that one. Finally, number 16, uh, dashed line, negative slope, y-intercept of negative 2. Uh, it's dashed, y-intercept negative 2, and shade, uh, 0, 0 uh, was true for this one, so shade to the right. This always gets into problems when you say right or up or down, uh, but hopefully you're catching the meaning here. And the last one, uh, solid line, y-intercept of negative 3, positive slope. So it goes up and shade below the line or to the right of the line. So 0, 0 would have failed for that one. Just be careful. You can't always use 0, 0, but uh, when you can, it's definitely the easiest one to to use. So there are the answers. Uh, go ahead and count how many you got wrong uh, and answer question 1 on the Google Forms. All right. Uh, so this week we're going to end with a chapter review on uh, Friday and then a test on Monday. Test on Monday. Uh, test to be a multiple choice test. Uh, and uh, as always, um, uh, you know you can you have a resource card for sure. Here's your homework for tonight. Um, so the uh, good news here is that we're not going to do anything new. It's going to be the same stuff. The only difference is we're going to do the converse of what we did which is uh, instead of giving you uh, inequality and you graph it, I'm going to give you a graph, and you're going to write the inequality. Okay, so let's get going here. So uh, the two objectives is uh, I'm going to give you a graph, you're going to write the inequality, and then lastly, there'll be one or two word problems as well. Okay, that we will uh, do in class uh, together. All right, here we go. Um, so here's uh, just a quick review of what we did to graph a uh, linear inequality. We graph it the same way, or we start graphing it the same way as we do a linear equation, which is make sure it's, it's uh, y is by itself, because we'd like it to be in the form of y equals mx plus b. just makes the graphing so much easier. If it is in the form of y equals mx plus b, this one is. You graph the y-intercept first, that's 2. The slope is 3 over 1, or up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. If you go in the other direction, down 3, or negative 3 over negative 1, so down 3 over 1. You determine whether or not it's solid or dashed by the inequality, so less than or greater than is dashed, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to is a solid. This one is greater than or equal to, so it's a solid line. And then you pick a test point. We always would like to choose 0, 0. It just makes the testing easier, but you can't choose 0, 0 if the line goes through 0, 0. This one, it doesn't. I mean, it's close, but it doesn't. So we choose 0, 0. That's the x and the y. We throw that into, there's where the test point lives. We throw 0, 0 uh, into the inequality. So x is 0, y is 0. And we see if this statement is now true or false. If it's true, right, then you shade on the side of the test point. If it's false, you shade on the other side. So for this one, 0, 0 was our test point, And we find out that this is false. 
So we do not shade on the side of 0, 0. We shade on the other side. Make sense? Just remember, you cannot shade on the, or you cannot pick a test point on the line itself. Also remember this, and you did most of these for work. Um, all lines except for a vertical line, uh, we start with the, uh, the basic uh, equation, y equals mx plus b. And in that form, a horizontal line would be y is equal to 0x, because it would have a slope of 0 for a horizontal line. 0x plus k, well, that just could be more simply written as y equals k. So y equals k is the form of all horizontal lines. And then vertical lines, because the slope is undefined, we can't use y equals mx plus b. Uh, and the form of vertical lines is x is equal to k. Okay? All right. Make sense? So today we're going to switch. Instead of me giving you the uh, inequality and you graph, now I'm going to give you the graph, right? And you are going to write the inequality. You are going to write the inequality. All right. Uh, quick note in our book, the shading uh, will all be red. The shading will be red. And in my examples, I use some different colors. Uh, but uh, in the book, all the shading will be red. There shouldn't be too much confusion. So here, the shaded side is the yellow side. So there are some steps. For those of you who need to write down the steps, write them down. So step number one is we write the base equation. Remember, the base equation for all non-vertical lines is y equals mx plus k. Or mx plus k. mx plus b. Sorry for that. Uh, if it is a horizontal line, you can write y equals k, and if it's a vertical line, you can write x equals k. Okay, but this one is a, not a vertical horizontal line, so we know we know the equation is going to say uh, y equals mx plus b. Now remember, we're doing inequality, but we still start off with the equation as our base equation. So uh, step number two is you got to pick two points on the line. Now we have we've done this last time we did this was for slope. And remember, we have to pick lattice, L-A-T-T-I-C-E, uh, um, -T -T lattice points, lattice points. So those are two points that live on that red line right there. And uh, pro tip here, always pick one of them to be your y-intercept. Okay, We're going to need that for the next one. So there's some, a lot of options here of what's the next point I can pick. I'm going to choose that one. There are other ones uh, that I could choose as well, too. And any two will work. Uh, but if you uh, want to do it the easiest way, make one of them your y-intercept. And the other one can be, you know, on either side. doesn't make a difference. Okay. And the reason we're doing that is because we need to calculate the slope. So going, uh, you can look at the line right here and already determine it's a positive number because it goes up from left to right. So let's see, how much does it go up? It goes up two squares and it goes over one square. So positive two over positive one, which is just plain two. So that means the M is the value two. And I said a pro tip is you pick one of those points to be the y-intercept because that's the b value. So to find the, the y-intercept, you just, well, hopefully you pick your y-intercept as one of your two points. In this case, the point is at y value 2. I'm sorry, well, I said 2. 1, uh, I'm staring at the number 2 there, uh, is 1. Uh, and now we have the two numbers that we need. So let's see, the slope was 2, the y-intercept was 1, so that would be 2x plus 1. Okay? But that's an equation. That's not an inequality. And remember, this is an inequality. So, so we got to have an extra step. So the extra step is the same as it was before. We pick a test point. Now your test point can either be in the shaded area or in the non-shaded area. I'm going to recommend you always pick in the shaded area because that's what makes it true. Okay? Um, so I'm going to always recommend. Now you can, you can do it either way. Uh, it would just, just be the opposite of what the way I will show you if you pick the other side. So I'm going to pick something in the shaded area. Guess what I'm going to pick? Elizabeth, guess what I'm going to pick? That, that's right. I'm always going to pick 0, 0 if I can. So I'm going to pick 0, 0, and I'm going to plug it back into, plug it back into my equation that I just wrote, y is equal to 2x plus 1. Uh, so we plug those in, we get to an answer, and that answer, 0 is equal to 1. Now we must make that true. Now clearly, 0 is not 1. So for an equation, that fails. But for an inequality, I can make that true, right? I can, I can choose some signs that would make 0 and 1 into a true statement because I'm using an inequality, okay? So the next step is to choose the sign. So we go back to the red line. Is it solid or is it dashed? It's solid. Uh, my two ch choices to make this true would be less than or less than or equal to. But because we know the red line is solid, 
Therefore, we're going to choose less than or equal to. So we throw that into our equation, right? We replace the uh, equal sign with a less than or equal to, and we're good to go. Okay? You ready to do one? All right. Oh, um, by the way, what would have happened if I chose on the other side? Let's say I chose uh, negative 1, 1, right? Well, clearly I would have to have made that last statement false, okay? All right, and, and it can be done that way. It's just that it requires way too much thinking. Um, so that's why I always say pick something in the shaded area, and that way you don't have to do that much thinking. All right, let's try one together. Okay, so follow along with me. If I'm talking too fast, rewind, play it again. Step number one is write the base equation. Is that a vertical or a horizontal line? Remember, if it was a vertical line, we'd write x equals k, horizontal y equals k. But if it's a non-vertical horizontal line, we write y equals mx plus b. Good? Step number two, pick two points. And I would say make sure one of them is the y-intercept. Okay? So I'm going to choose one as the y-intercept. The other two, ha the other one has to be on a lattice point. Now, you may not have chose that one, but we'll still get the same answer. Okay, let's see. So to calculate the slope, it's positive, so I better get a positive number. It looks like up two squares, right two squares. Well, that's 2 over 2, which is simply 1. So I know my slope is 1. Uh, and the reason why I always say uh, have one of your two lattice points would be in the y-intercept, because that's, that's literally going to be the next step. So let's see if I, can't, I can do it right this time. Uh, the y-intercept is going to be negative 1. All right, there we go. So let's see, a slope of 1, a y-intercept of 1, that would be y is equal to x minus 1. Minus one. Or, wait, why didn't you write 1x minus 1? I could have, right? It's no big deal. Either way works. Because remember, 1 times x is just x. Okay, so we have our equation. Okay, next step is to choose a test point. Choose a test point. Okay, so I love choosing 0, 0, but 0, 0 is in the non-shaded region this time. So I want to choose something in the shaded region. Pro tip. Pick two numbers that are the same, if at all possible. So, for instance, there's very few numbers here. Uh, let's see. 1, 1 is a non-shaded. Negative 1, negative 1 is a non-shaded. Uh, we got problems here. So I, gotta, I have to choose something. I'm going to choose something right here. And, okay, I am opening myself up for making mistakes here because, you know, I didn't pick something. To, you know, I got a different X and a different Y. But I did choose the same number, sort of, as one's positive, one's negative. So just make sure you don't mess this up. Uh, labeling would help. So let's see, x is 2, y is negative 2. So when I throw that, y was negative 2, x was 2. When I throw those two numbers in there and simplify, 2 minus 1 is 1, I get that statement right there. We okay? You following the logic? Now I have to make that true. Clearly, clearly it's not true right now. I'm going to make it true with using inequalities. So the only two inequalities that would make that true would either be less than or less than or equal to, okay? So I look to the line, the red one there, and I see that it's dashed. Therefore, I know it's not less than or equal to. It's less than. Does that make sense? All right. For those of you that need to see that again, rewind. Play those two examples one more time. Uh, and for those of you that got it and want to try one, well, here's one. Go ahead and uh, pause the video, write the inequality, and then play it and check. How'd you do? Oh, and I, I also said you should uh, answer the Google Forms. Uh, so this is box number two for the Google Forms. Okay, so let's see. The y-intercept is uh, positive three. It looks like the slope is up one over two, so one half. Uh, pick a test point. Uh, I don't know, negative five, uh, five. We throw that in there. We find that we need to use a greater than or equal to because it's solid to make it true. Okay. Uh, now you could have chosen any test point, uh, and I'll just say for those of you that you know don't want to take my advice and use zero zero, you can make it, but then you have to make the statement false. You have to pick the inequality that would make it false. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, let's do one of the weird ones: a vertical horizontal line. All right, this one's a vertical line, so we know that all vertical lines are not in the form of y equals mx plus b. All vertical lines are the form of x equals k, where k is, well, basically the x-intercept. So where does it go through the x value, or which x value doesn't change here? Yeah, every point along that line is x value positive 2, x value positive 2. 
Now all we have to do is pick the inequality that makes it true with our test point. So what do you want to use as a test point? Um, and, and there's lots of options there. You could use 5.5. Five. That would be a good one. Uh, I did not choose 5.5. Five. I should choose 5.5. Five. That would make it easier, right? So I'm going to choose that point right there, which is 4, 0. The x value there is uh, 4. So when we throw 4 into the x, right, I have to make that uh, a true statement. So what inequalities would make that true, right, a, a greater than or a greater than or equal to, uh, therefore 4 would be greater than 2 or 4 would be greater than or equal to 2. So which one are we going to use, greater than or greater than or equal to? Let's see, it's a dashed line, so we are going to use the greater than symbol. So therefore x is greater than 2. Make sense? Okay. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too challenging. All right, uh, last thing is we'll wrap this up with a word problem. Uh, we haven't done one of those in a while, so let's try this one. So it says you're remodeling a kitchen, uh, and you got two areas, two areas you got to cover. One you're going to cover with tiles, looks like above the stove. And the other one was with, it's, uh, with the, uh, which is with, uh, uh, um, I can't talk, with wallpaper, thank you, with wallpaper. Uh, and we have different areas for both. So the question is, uh, well, um, how are we going to figure out how much we can spend uh, on each? Because we're, we're limited to $420 there. So here's how this one's done. You sign two variables. Um, uh, since the tiled, tiled area looks like it's on the left, we'll make that one the Y, and we'll make the wallpaper the X. And it would not matter uh, which one you chose for your variables. Okay. Uh, and you're like, why didn't you choose T for tiles and uh, W for wall? You could, but remember we're going to graph this. So it's a little bit easier if you make a y and an x. It just makes a bit more sense. All right, we're going to write two equations. Well, let's see. The tiled area, uh, if, if y is the amount of tiled, well, the area is how big? Well, it tells us it's 12, so that would be 12 times y plus, let's see, the wallpaper area is 24. It tells us that. So 24 times x, and, and we have to be, we can't be greater than 420. We've got to be less than or equal. And we could spend $420. But we can we can also spend you know ten dollars for that matter. Okay, so this will represent the equation that would uh, represent all the possibilities that would make this scenario true. You know we're keeping our costs less than or equal to four hundred twenty bucks. Well, this is kind of hard to graph, right? Uh, unless we solve for y. So notice. Uh, move the twenty four x to one side, so we're going to get the y by itself. So move the twenty four to the other side, then divide everything by twelve. All right. Uh, just remember, if you ever multiply or divide by a negative number, it does flip the inequality. In this particular case, we're going to be dividing by 12, so it doesn't uh, flip the inequality. So there's my inequality. Okay. So if I were to graph y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 35, if I were to graph that, well, kind of be kind of would be kind of hard since uh, I mean those squares go by one. So I probably would change uh, the values of those if you were forced to graph on this. Um, the other thing, too, is remember, you can't spend negative dollars. Therefore, I'm only concerned with what happens in quadrant one, where everything is positive. Now, why, I went ahead and had the computer graph it for me. There's my graph right there. Um, but what I want you to understand is what does this mean? We knew that Y was the tile cost. We knew that X was the wallpaper cost. Well, that red region right there represents every possible combination of wallpaper and tile costs. For instance, if I spend, I don't know, uh, $10 on wallpaper, it would tell me if I go from the 10 on the wallpaper, the X value, uh, all the way up to the line, everywhere along that line there would represent how much I can spend uh, for my tiles. Okay, uh, and then that goes for every single possibility. So if I spend $5, uh, per square foot on wallpaper. What could I spend on tile? That would represent every single possibility. So, uh, for instance, if I spend 50, if you read the graph, if I spend $15 uh, on wallpaper, I can't spend any more than $5 on tile. So I got to buy tile that's $5 or less. So, for instance, I can't spend $15 per square foot on wallpaper and $10 for tile, I would be outside of the shaded region. And, and I'll just say this is a very common thing that's used in the business world to show every single possibility. They simply make an inequality, they graph it, and the shaded region represents uh, the areas that are good, and the non-shaded area represents all the areas that are bad. 
So there's just one quick example of a real-world problem that can be solved by uh, graphing linear inequalities. Okay. So here's your homework tonight. Uh, should be done pretty quickly uh, since you're not graphing. You're just basically looking at a graph. So this is probably 10 or 15 minutes worth of work. Uh, good luck with that. Uh, send me an email if you're having problems. Uh, but that will conclude the class, and I will see you guys on uh, Wednesday.